talk about WordPress advanced uh, development. And I want to talk more spe specifically about theme development today. So my name is Jeremy Matter. I'm a project manager and partner at uh, Aptitude, a web uh, agency based in the Innovation Park in Lausanne. And I'm working with WordPress since 2010, so quite a long time now. Um, quick summary, I will talk about the history of the development tools that I use uh, in my workflow. Then I will speak about um, the development guidelines. And then uh, more tools, uh, more in the WordPress world uh, in the area of development. So imagine me like 10 years ago uh, in my bedroom using text edits for uh, building websites. So my first website were built with uh, just uh, text editing software. So there were, were no uh, error management. So everything I did, I had to do it properly. Uh, I made a lot of mistakes, breaking slides, etc. And I worked also with Filezilla, uh, which is a software to transfer uh, files into a server. Okay. After I discovered Dreamweaver. Okay. <laughs> Let me just talk about. No, it's not getting worse. I <laughs> no, the the, the interest thing about Dreamweaver is that I was able to um, have the coding um, software uh, and the file management system in, this, in the same environment. So I could use only one software to do both. You're reading the surprise. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So yeah, there's a problem with the transition. So after I begin to get interested in Coda, which is like Dreamweaver, you have the file transfer, you can also code, but you can add a lot of modules on top of that uh, to help you code, code better. Um, for example, if you know about uh, SAS or SCSS, it's just an improved um, uh, CSS language where you can have um, <coughs> variables, do functions, uh, etc. And uh, the operation of MAMP uh, with a um, software that was able to um, put a PHP uh, server on my computer very easily. And uh, we had uh, database management, etc. Et okay. So, still with Coda, um, I tried to use afterwards uh, Local by Flywheel, which is an interesting software because it's specifically made for WordPress. So on it you can create a site, uh, it will install WordPress, the database, uh, in a few seconds, or minutes, it depends. Uh, and more importantly, you can also share the website with a teammate. So you can export the website and you can just drag it into his software and uh, have all the environment, uh, database, and stuff uh, already here. So in terms of collaboration, it was more or less interesting. And then, very important, Git. Git um, allows us developers to uh, version our code, so every modification we have to commit it on the, on the Git server. And then we have a, uh, a history of uh, all the, um, the modification that we did. If we work in team, it's also really interesting and important, important sorry, uh, because you can also see which change your teammates did on the same uh, website or a plugin and stuff. And that's beginning to be a little bit more complicated. Okay. 
Now Atom is a much uh, more um, hackable uh, code editing software. You can add a lot, but really a lot of modules on top of that to uh, also increase your workflow like, like Coda. Um, I begin also to work with Vagrant, which allows us to um, install uh, development server on our um, computer. Then still git, and then also really interesting, npm, node package manager, so it's a manager for package, uh, JavaScript packages. Uh, Yarn, which is the same but it's a competitor. And then also Composer, which, which is a PHP dependency manager. So the idea of all these tools is to explain that I began coding with nothing at all, and now I use a variety of small tools, packages, etc. The, the goal is really to, to um, improve your workflow, um, bring more productivity in your work, and uh, also have more quality in the code that you write. So yeah, why are the, all these tools? Productivity, I talked a bit about it, sorry. My notes are not showing. Okay. So productivity, collaboration, when you work with a team, you need tools that can be efficient and save you time. Um, reliability, you need tools also that can help you uh, create, uh, create stuff, not, nor, uh, not create problems. And finally, uh, more structure also. Uh, it's important when you develop to have a structure that other people can also understand in the, um, in the file structure of your project. So now, what about WordPress? There are some development standards. You can see the codex, there is the, um, the theme development uh, standards. Also, uh, the WordPress coding standards. But there is a few uh, best practices about how to organize your project. I don't know who here have ever built a theme from scratch. Okay, great. Um, so you will get my point later. Um, so there is a let me get back. Uh, there is a few best practices because you can you can do your theme, um, organize it as you want. If you respect the theme development standards and the WordPress coding standards, you can have a uh, which folder that you want to organize your your stuff, uh, your assets in the in the theme. So what we need for development standards is first coding conventions, uh, but more than, uh, than, um, than WordPress coding standards is like linters. This is uh, like small packages that you can have to uh, make some correct, some highlights on your code when you do a mistake. So it helps you code, code better, have the, the best structure possible and avoid mistakes. Um, of course, don't repeat yourself, so you have to, to build something that you can <coughs> reuse and uh, also like the, the small components that you, you could have, uh, you don't want to, to um, rewrite them uh, with a new team. Small assets deliveries, so this is more about the performance stuff, uh, it's really important to have all the JavaScript uh, CSS files minified and as a small number of files as possible. And then do not reinvent the wheel, of course. Uh, you have to use things that are already available for you. Uh, you don't have to, to reinvent it every time. So now I'm going to talk about frameworks because I said a lot of stuff, and uh, I'm getting to my, to my point. So, uh, I want to, to talk about three frameworks which, which introduce um, the MVC concept. 
The MVC concept is relatively simple. So you have, it's an acronym, you have the, the model, which is the database, uh, the view, which is um, the thing that your user is going to, to see, and then the controller, which will take um, the request, ask the database, and then send it back to the view. Okay. Um, in this concept, you have a separation between um, your front-end code and your back-end code. So your code is really more uh, organized, and uh, you will see later uh, the, the folder structure kind of makes sense and allows you to, um, to have more comprehension for your teammates or other people in how you, you get to them. So the first framework that exists is Timber. Timber um, have also the object-oriented code, so MVC, and it works with the Tweak uh, engine um, and yeah, the Tweak template engine. Then we have Themosis uh, that does quite the same thing, but offers the possibility to uh, choose if you want to use Tweak or Blade. I will talk a little bit more about Blade later. And uh, finally, another one, Roots, uh, which I will get more deep, deeper into it. So, Roots uh, is a development framework. It's uh, divided in three uh, products. So we have, we have Trellis. I will go more deeply into uh, the, all the description of those products later. Uh, Bedrock and Sage. So, Trellis. Uh, here is the, the folder structure, but let's talk about what it does. It creates, with Vagrant and vir a virtual box, um, a small server on your own computer, uh, so you can run afterwards WordPress with all the PHP stuff, uh, so some uh, other development tools that are really helpful, like, like MailHub, which is um, a small um, email inbox for developers. And then you can see that you have your root folder with the site, then uh, the Trellis folder with all the stuff uh, related to, uh, to your uh, environment, and then all the seed stuff, and we are going to get a bit deeper into that. So, now Bedrock. Um, sorry. So Bedrock is a WordPress developer, uh, boilerplate, sorry with modern development tools. It's easier to, uh, to configure it, uh, and there is an, also an improved structure. So here, you have the regular uh, WordPress file structure that you maybe know, and there, there is the Bedrock file structure. So here you have the site folder that we saw on the last slide. Then you have a first config folder with environments. Okay, what are those? Um, of course, you have a development environment. It's the one that you have on your computer uh, and you are working uh, with it uh, every day. Then we have a staging environment. It's basically a, um, a place where you can put your, your, your site, doing some tests, and uh, showing it to uh, your end customers or some testers. The idea is not to, um, to push modifications directly on the live uh, website because you can, you can break it. And then you have finally the production environment, um, which is the one that is up and running and uh, is tied to customers. So in these files, you have a lot of small configurations, options that you, you can have um, that is not really important for today. You have the, the vendor uh, folder, which will um, hold all the composer dependencies. And then uh, the web folder, which is uh, subdivided in an app folder, where there is all the really the, the content of the WordPress website, and then the WP folder, 
which contains the core, uh, all the, the files that is contained in the VP include and the VP admin uh, folder. Okay. Uh, and now there is Sage. Okay. So Sage is a WordPress starter team with a modern, modern uh, development workflow. Um, I'm going to, to go also explain everything. So you have your, your basic theme, and it's divided with a lot of other folders. So you have first the app um, the app folder, which will contain um, the main part of all the PHP of your theme. You will have a controller uh, folder, uh, which will include all the um, the controller's files. So every time you have to, to make a loop or uh, I don't know um, get the the author name or um, email etc. A lot of stuff. You can write your code in the controller, and then uh, you will have a method to grab it in the view and display it. The idea is really to separate all the PHP code and the HTML as much as possible, so it's really readable. Okay, so we have the configuration file, um, the this folder. Okay, um, Sage introduced a build um, function, so every time you run it, it will take all the assets that are in this folder, so the fonts, the images, the scripts, and uh, the, the styles. It will combine them and minify them, so you have the, the less uh, amount of files, and uh, it will be also um, much smaller in size. So then, in resources, we still have the assets, and then we have all the views here, with all the, the layouts and the partials. This is where we will put all the, the regular uh, template files, like your page templates, uh, the category templates that you can have in the theme. Okay. Um, those are uh, the, the few benefits that you get uh, in Sage. So you have the asset compilation, I talked about it, a quick, quick setup. You also have the live reload and compilation integrated with uh, the browser sync, so every time you do a, a style modification, uh, you will see it automatically in your browser. Uh, it's well integrated with, uh, with uh, advanced custom fields. And then, like I said, you have the controllers, which are here, and the views. And they are separated. Uh, Sage use um, Blade. Blade uh, is, a, um, is a template engine which use um, Oh, sorry, I don't remember. Um, but the main thing, it's, uh, it's taken from the Laravel framework, which is a framework, uh, PHP framework, used to build a robust application. So it's, it has some time, it's, it's well used now. So, uh, an example now. This is the, what, what the page that PHP looks, looks like in the framework underscores. So you can see you have PHP, HTML, now PHP again, HTML, etc. Okay, so that's not really readable. Now to compare, this is the page that PHP uh, .blade. So it's the same template in Sage. So you can see there is no HTML here. You have sections and some new kind of um, uh, markup that you have to, to learn uh, within the, the template, uh, template engine. Uh, the includes, will, which will lead to uh, other files. Okay, so what, what, you prefer, what do you prefer to read between this and that? I think this is the most readable thing that <laughs> depends uh, on your approach. Okay. So, 
you, you will see. Um, now, where is all my human going? Uh, there is a. Oh, sorry, this is good. Um, <laughs> All the HTML is contained in a general template, which is called app, where you will have all your HTML markups and all the things that are part of WordPress, the head, the header, etc., etc. Okay? So you have a single uh, file where you can do all the change of your general website HTML structure. Okay. Now, a small word about, about components. I talked about reusing things, etc. So imagine you have um, an alert. Here it's a, it's a danger alert. You will put um, a variable for the title and a variable for the for the content. Here. So the idea is afterwards you will be able to uh, reuse that bit of code everywhere you need it to in your website. So you will simply just do that. So you call the components called alert. So it's just a relation between the name here and here. Then um, put in the variable the title the word forbidden, which will go here, and then the content which will go here. So with that, you can quickly build a website with without headaches and uh, it goes really, really quickly. Uh, now, in terms of preferences, uh, that's the example from the, the documentation. Uh, obviously, uh, it's uh, just a, a simple website, but you can see that with the asset minification uh, and the compilation, um, the website loads pretty fast from the beginning. So the, the framework will allow you to, um, to, um, <coughs> to have a faster website from the start with less optimization uh, in the future. Of course, then you will have to uh, um, reduce the size of all the assets that you will put in your content, um, use a caching plugin uh, to, um, to minify the, the HTML and also uh, serving a caching version of your website. Okay, so now to, to finish, um, so I explained from where I, I come from and where I'm at uh, today. Uh, it took me quite some, some long time, approximately 10 years, but I was not doing this professionally at the beginning. Um, but the idea is not to be scared uh, of all the tools that are presented here. If you are not comfortable with it, you, you need to practice, to experience, and uh, really go out there uh, in order to, to, um, to master them and then be able to create uh, more structured WordPress uh, things. Thank you. I thought you were, you were going to present the Timber framework. What, what would be, according to you, like the, the main differences with uh, what was going to um, I haven't really go deep in the Timber framework. There, are, there is an expert here, but I think the, the main difference is the, that Timber is providing a, a framework. Uh, you saw me, I'm wrong. <laughs> Uh, Timber is primarily just for building um, themes. So you have the um, uh, object-oriented uh, framework like, and you have also the tweak uh, template engine. In uh, Root, you have, of course, Sage, which is um, a theme, uh, a starter team, uh, with also the object approach, and uh, they use a uh, competitor of the, the, the template engine, which is called Blade. But it also introduces 
um, the, 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 the server and uh, the boilerplate uh, inside to help you uh, with the website uh, deployment uh, and updates. I wanted to ask if uh, you're building all the sites from scratch with uh, templates like this, or with, with um, frameworks like that, or you also sometimes have the problem that the budget is so small that you cannot really put from scratch and have to use something else. Yeah. Um, I did both, but now um, the, our company uh, had a strategy we want to offer only custom-made websites. Uh, it goes through the user experience, the design, and of course, at the end, the development. Um, the, the benefits, it's, of course, it cost a lot more, um, but you can really do whatever you want in terms of uh, functionalities. Uh, the issue that we had with, uh, for example, uh, premium themes that we, we bought on Theme Forest or uh, on Elegant Themes is more uh, sometimes when you have to do some uh, tweaks and uh, adapt the, the templates uh, to fit the, 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 the needs of your project scope. And uh, we had also other issues when we were uh, updating uh, those websites. Uh, all the theme options were uh, gone and the seat was of course, not uh, as beautiful as before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did I uh, answer to your question? What are the names of the tools that you presented that you used today? As, uh, you uh, showed the icons on the tools, but uh, yeah. get the, the uh, Yeah. For the frameworks, uh, the teams for coding, which is what Atoll. Uh, yeah. Even there. Yeah, there are the this one. Okay. This one, Atoll, Vagrant. Atoll's the first one. Okay. Yeah, thanks. These websites, do you deploy them to just run the mill um, hostings, or do you have to change things so the structure that is different from normal WordPress that works? It depends. It depends on your hosting because um, you will need, um, if you deploy your website with Vagrant, etc., you will need to have root access on the server uh, to, to, to make. To make it work. So sometimes if the customer doesn't have the, um, the server that goes with all those tools, uh, we just push the, the, the theme and the database on the staging or product website and do small adjustments. One other benefit that we, we had with the, all the configuration is that we can quickly set up a project uh, between the developers in the company uh, because we, we are in the, in the project files, there are some uh, small configuration files with all the dependencies, and then you just have to install them and uh, and run one or two commands in your terminal, and uh, you can have the, the project up and running. So it's really quick. It's an alternative to uh, to look up by Flywheel. It does kind of the same thing, but uh, you know what's what's happening, and you can. Uh, it's more easy for developers to go into the code and uh, very short problem. That's why they're developing. Uh, in the end, when you, when you finish everything, you, just, you can put it on a normal um, WordPress website that you create with Apache and all these things. You don't have to change things. Yeah, can you just repeat the question? In the end, when you, when you put the website online, mm -hmm. live, do you have to change settings on the server? Or can you just create WordPress and put your, your theme on that? Again, it depends on the on the, the hosting that you are. Uh, 
putting the website uh, into. Okay, then you might have a question, it's okay. <coughs> so we're gonna have the next one. Thank you. Yeah, just sure. to if you want to discuss more about it and have uh, other questions that comes, uh, don't hesitate to uh, come and uh, speak to me.